Hallelujah. I want to be more like you. Amen. Bless myself. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, as we come together today, as we were talking about celebrating the 4th of July, the birth of this nation coming forth, we've come a long ways. Let me say it again. We in America have come a long ways. We have a liberty in this nation that many nations will never experience. We understand this right here when the Declaration of Independence was written. July the 4th, 1776. It was not a time of jumping, laughing, shouting. It was a time of turmoil. It was a time of stress. It was a time that 13 colonies wondered, will we survive? Are we going to be able to withstand the battle that's about to come? There were ones that looked and they said, what you see of us today may not be what you see tomorrow. For we're willing to give our life for a new beginning that God has given unto us. It was during that time that everything that was happening that seemed to be different, different than Britain, different than what Europe was used to. But in this, they would battle the cold, they would battle disease, they would, they would have all kind of battles coming against them. But one thing they all did is they all came together and they all prayed to Almighty God. And they believed that their prayer was not something that was written by man. But it was something felt right here in the heart. And believing that one day that they would look and see, maybe from the portals of heaven, that their prayers were answered. It was during this time as the song said, fill me up, Lord, I want more of you and less of me. Oh, that sounds real good. That seems real good. But when you really mean it, it means I'm willing to lay my life down. It means that I'm willing to stand, not for theology. I'm willing to stand for my Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think at that time that they were coming together and they were pinning down the reason for their decision. The reason that we want to be separated. And it was, not a, it was not a selfish reason. It was not a fleshly reason. It was a reason that they came together to believe that each and every one of us are created by God. To believe that, yes, we can be a better nation. Yes, we can be a country. That they can come from any country in the world. And they can find freedom. Freedom to worship. Freedom to congregate. Yes. Freedom to be able to explain and, and to be able to preach the word of God. It was ones that said to this right here. If America ever loses its freedom, it will not be from the enemies from without. It will not be Russia, China, Iran, Iraq. It will not be any of those. But it will be from the spiritual leaders within the body. It will come from within the walls of the so-called churches. It will come to where preachers begin to water down the word. It will come to a time where gender has no meaning. History will be erased. When history is erased, remember this right here. A new history will be written. It's being written today. As Pastor Brian had said this earlier. Understanding this right here. We are all here because history. Because God brought together the ones that would eventually become our mom and dad. That would bring us forth. And history would be written by ones that stood strong. I love what Martin Luther King said. Don't judge me by the color of my skin. But judge me by the content of my heart. And that's not just if you're black. It's not just if you're white. It is for all mankind. And we see that today. As you look around today, right here in the congregation, and you that are watching, 
We come together not, amen, we do not come together because that we're separated from each other. We come together to join together. Because one day we're going to live in the kingdom of heaven together. And we come to share our faith and our belief. And we come to share history. I was talking with my biological mother. And I was getting some history on my family. Because I wanted to know why certain things happen. I want to know why certain feelings come. And I know this right here. It comes down through the bloodline. Yes. And I want to know the history. Don't tell me just the good. I want to know all of it. Amen. And so when I begin to research it and I begin to go into it, I begin to understand why that we are like we are. It's because down through time, yes, God used what the devil meant for evil for his own good. Yes. God would take what was meant for evil for his own good. If it had not been, yes, sir. if it had not been for slavery, yeah. you wouldn't be here. Yeah. When I stood in Nigeria with Pastor Brian, we stood there with the village chiefs. This is what they said to us. They said, if it had not been for slavery, America would not. They said the blacks in America would not know what freedom is. Amen. Amen. God used it. For my family that is Irish, if it had not been for what they went through, the atrocities they went through, the Irish were potato farmers. They were considered to be the lowest of low. It was during this time their houses would be burnt to the ground and they would go in and they would slaughter them. It was during that time that we found out that, listen, when you bring mankind in from every part of the earth, you're bringing in the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. But God said, I'm going to take all of this right here. And I'm going to form a nation. And this nation will be called one nation under God. It will be a nation that will pray to me. It will be a nation that will stand through the test of time. And it will be a nation that will quickly rise up and begin to save nations around the world. It will be a nation that is not, is not built upon its wealth. It's a nation that is built upon its prayers, Amen. upon its faithfulness. It will be those single mothers that are trying to raise their children and work. It will be those that are still praying and still taking their children to church and still showing them the way. Not the way that seems right unto man, but the way that God has in his internal plan. As we begin to look at the word, we begin to understand this right here, that many times, that as we begin to look at this nation that we are living in right now, and we begin to ask this one question right here, God, what is it that you have for me in 2023? 2023. We are blessed, everyone here, to be able to see 2023. We're blessed. Many well, have never lived to see this day. In fact, if it is when I turn on the news this morning, I, I say this every morning when I give, I turn the news on. Why? I want to know what the devil's doing. What happened? We got young people bleeding out, dying. I turn on the news. We got, we got drive-by shootings taking place. A baby hit with a stray bullet in the back. Oh yeah, it may live, but it may be paralyzed the rest of its life. Why is that? Because we have strayed far away from the teaching that the Bible has given unto us. We have, we have taken manhood out of the family. We have taken the masculine and we've turned it into feminine. We have come to the place where that we... In America, do not desire to have that male role model. We put dresses and lipstick on them and send them out to the kids so that they can begin to get a different view of what life is. We look around and we ask this question. There was a time that the church stood and the church would come against pornography. The church would come against open sex. But today, the church entertains it. There are churches in America that are running the flags around this, this inside of the auditorium there. I, I would say sanctuary, but it's an auditorium. 
celebrating gay pride. It is a time that we begin to want to come to church, but we're asking the preacher to pray for more wealth instead of pray for our health. It's a time that we come. And we ask this question, God, what can you do for me? Not what can I do for the kingdom of heaven? You see, when God looked out in 2023, he looked out to see who is it I can send for me. Who is it that will go and will speak the truth? Who is it that's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Because they know, they have knowledge, it's the power of God unto salvation. Because they have received that teaching of the word. It's a time in America where the flag itself, we look at it and we find out that every time we turn around, that the flag is beginning to lose the value that we have placed in it. We look around today and they are saying, take the Pledge of Allegiance out of school. Well, you know, I said this. You've already taken God out of school. So why have the flag in school? Why have the Pledge of Allegiance? There is no higher pledge, amen, than the pledge that we give to our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to say this. The reason that America is sick, the reason that America is going through a spiritual COVID is because of the church. church. Come on, man. We show up and we shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We'll, we'll raise our hands and everything, but we're yet to attend a school board meeting. We're yet to stand up to the mayors and the city council that want to digress, take away from what God has given unto us. I don't know if you saw it, but here in Texas, what they're saying is what, what we want to do is take away the curfew. Oh, no. what is that? <laughs> That's terrible. Our, our young people, let them be out there at two or three o'clock in the morning. I want to tell you something. Of course, I grew up on the farm, but after dark, nothing good happens. We find out after midnight, Nothing happens that is good. And I was always told, if you're not home in this dark, you'll wish you was. Anybody here? We see that right now. Authority of the parents has been taken out of the house. We see that right now to take and correct your children that you are now accused of child abuse. You know, when I was growing up, my parents would have been in prison. Somebody talked to me. Yeah. Now, my parents didn't go out. Now, some of y'all, they may have made you go out and get a switch off the tree. No. You wear that out. Mine had a thick leather belt, and you couldn't wear it out. But understand this right here, that it was during that time of correction that I began to understand, amen, to honor authority. Yes, come on now. It was during that time that I began to understand, you cut up in the house of God, wait till I get you home. Anybody here? Because understand this right here, you had mom, you had dad, you had grandma, and they're all going to get you. Because the house of God, you don't cut up in it. You see, we lost that. Now we come in the house of God. We can do anything we want. Talk any which way we want. Come on, somebody. Man, I've got to be up here praying. Everybody be like, hey, did you hear what happened over there? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're praying. Praying the power of God. Healing over your body. You missed it. You know why? Because you're over here talking. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. I was always told this growing up, amen. Now listen, when grown-ups are talking, you be quiet. Anybody here? I opened my mouth one time. There was, there was, there was somebody talking to my daddy. I, I opened my mouth, and there was a sudden pressure came across. A mighty rushing wind. And it stopped right here. 
He didn't say anything, but I, I knew then. Keep your mouth shut. But see, we lost that respect, and, it, and when our children see it, they disrespect us too. Let me get back to the Word of God before I get out here. Fourth of July. What are you going to celebrate? Think about it. Is it going to be just another day? The 4th of July. To stop in memory and say, you know, have I really researched history? Have I really researched the Word of God and how it played such a prominent role in the forming of this nation? Most of us haven't. Most of us you got that handy dandy all purpose smartphone, amen, and don't even use it because it's got too much intelligence. It'll tell you what history says. It'll tell you the pain that this nation went through. And so as we begin to look at it, one of the things that we ask is that you pray on the 4th of July. Pray for this nation. How many know you should pray every day? But I'm not talking about praying for yourself, us foreign, no more. I'm talking about praying for this nation. I'm talking about praying, amen, hallelujah, that God is going to move in this nation, that we're going to see a revival in this nation, amen, and that they're coming from all parts, amen, all walks of life. But they're coming, amen, they're not coming to a church, they're coming to an emergency spiritual room. They're coming broken, beaten, battered, and bruised. They're coming so that what we can do is we can begin to thank God for each and every one. Listen to this right here. My Father, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, as creator of all things, I want to thank you. Thank you for taking me through yet another year with so many deaths this past year. I'm truly grateful to still be alive. Anybody here? Come on, someone just thank him right now. You're still alive, amen. He brought you through. He brought you through sickness. He's brought you through all of these battles in life, amen. And here you are right now on Sunday in your right mind praising him. Thank you for sustaining me during all the hardships, fears, and disappointments. Thank you for being my rock. Come on, somebody. Thank you for being my shield and my place of safety. Brother said this right here. When the prophet turned and he said to his servant, look up. look up. Your head's been down too long. You've been depressed too long. Come on, somebody. You've been looking more at man than looking at God. Look up. And when he looked up, he saw chariots of fire. He saw that God had his angels all surrounded and around them. And that no weapon formed against them would prosper. Come on, church, lift up your head. Lift up your head and look high. Why? Because in 2023, God is still moving. God is still opening the heavens. God is still saying, I am your protector. I'm your shield. I am your high tower. As we begin to look and we begin to see the enemy, as slowly that they're coming and they want to circle around us, they want to actually bring us to the place of silence. But let me tell you something. My battle is not with them. For my battle is, is not with the flesh, amen. I'm battling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. I'm coming against murder. I'm coming against right now homosexuality. I'm coming against the death of those babies. I'm coming against same-sex marriage. I'm coming against that which is trying to take and, and bring fear back into the body of Christ. As I begin to pray, I said, I want to thank you, Lord, that this year I will hear you more clearly. Anybody here? Yes, I will love you more deeply and be consumed with a zeal for you. Yeah. I pray distractions won't sidetrack me this year. Amen. But that I will remain constant okay. and persistent. Yes. I declare, someone say, I declare. Amen. I declare that I will be a finisher. With my faith in Jesus. Lord, I pray that I will accomplish, experience, and fulfill all that you have ordained for me. Is anybody here anointed? Anybody ordained? If you are saved, amen. 
Hallelujah. That means you're ordained, amen, to preach the gospel. And in this right here, it means that you open your mouth and godly things come out. It means that you are a light in a dark place. It means that you're hope to the hopeless. It means that you're help to the helpless. It means in the midst of this right here, your eyesight to the blind, amen, that you can bring them by a way that they have not known. You do not sit in church just to be a pew setter. You're to be a go-God giver. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I was a peace setter for many years. Come on, somebody. But now I'm a, I'm a go-God giver. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and understand this right here. God is going to use, amen, he's going to use some difficult situations to bring his people back. See, you didn't really pray until you got in trouble. You didn't really pray until all of a sudden it was in. Oh, God, it's me. If you don't come through, oh, God, I'm not going to make it. God says, you know what? It's working. A difficult situation's working. It's bring your children back. It's bring your grandchildren back. It's bring your wife back. It's bring your husband back. It's bring the church back. It's bringing back what God has for you. Hallelujah. I declare this morning. That the enemy of this nation will not intercept or delay anything that God has purposed for me this year or this season. All that you have planned for me will come to pass in Jesus' name. Anybody believe that? Come on, lift your hands. All that God has for you is going to come to pass this year. It's coming. Come on, the doors of heaven are open. There's a spiritual blessing. Don't, oh, ooh, it almost got me. Ooh. Come on, somebody. Just stand and say, I want it, Lord. I want it. I know, Lord God. I know my flesh. I know my faults. I know my weakness. But here I am, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we got too many that are dodging it. Why? Because they still got tentacles going out to the world and they still got all their worldly feelings. And God has said, You want to bring America back? He said, Understand this right here. You come back to me. He said, that means America's coming back. You and you and you and you and you and you. He said, bring it back. My, come on, somebody. Reach out, reach out, reach out. Hallelujah. All that you have planned for me will come to pass in Jesus' name. I declare that at the end of this year, I will say God has done it again. Oh, you didn't hear me. I will declare at the end of this year, I will say, I don't know what you're going to say, God has done it again, and His purpose for my life has been fulfilled. Come on, give Him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means in this right here that what I've said, amen, is I have declared a declaration of independence. Come on. See, I didn't join. I, I got to be careful on this. I didn't join some denomination. I joined, amen, with the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, the body of Christ. I am not of a denomination, amen. Come on, hallelujah. How many know this right here? Denomination brought separation. Oh, if you're not this one here, you're not going to heaven. Oh, if you're not this one here, if you don't baptize this way, if you don't do this right here, if you don't dress this way, if you don't cut your hair, if you don't do this right here, understand this right here. My Bible said you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. See, we got, we got so much religion in the pulpits of America, we don't see many getting saved today. No, no, no. Come and join my church. No, come and join the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm going to mess you up here. Because I'm going to bring you into the red letters, the red words of our Lord Jesus Christ. On what to expect in your journey of salvation. Right here in America. Now, you're already seeing it. Now, I want you to... I want you to hear it. All right. This comes from St. John chapter 16. Verse 1, Jesus said, now listen. 
These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Now, how many know we got many in the body of Christ offended? Come on. Oh, you know what? They promoted somebody over me. Oh, you know what? I thought I was supposed to get this. I thought I was supposed to get that. I thought I was supposed to... No, understand this right here. You do what God has called you to do and leave everybody else alone. Hallelujah. He said, now they're going to put you out of the church. <laughs> yeah, the time cometh that whosoever... Don't be looking around. Whosoever killeth you or takes away your joy or takes away... Come on. Hallelujah. That, that which God has given unto you. He said, they're going to think that they're doing God service. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 3. And these things will they do. Oh, there's more. And these things, plural, will they do unto you. Because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you. That when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go but my now, way to him that yeah. sent me. And none of you ask me whether to go or not. But because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be seated. Oh, yeah. how, many, how many times have you thought about leaving the body of Christ? How many times have you thought about, well, you know what? I'm not going to that church no more. Come on. Come on. You know, I'm going to tell you, I had someone quit church because I walked by them and went to the visitors and didn't shake their hand. Oh, wow. I said, oh, my God. That's not hard, Chip. Can you imagine getting into a real spiritual battle? Yeah. I said, oh, Lord. I called and said, I haven't seen you in a while. Well, you walked around by me, didn't shake my hand. I said, well, come on back. I'll shake it twice. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said, let me ask you something. I, I, and you know, sometimes I can be kind of rough. I said, let me ask you. I said, are you still working? Yeah. Why are you working? Because I need the money. I said, how many there shake your hand? Mm -hmm. How many there tell you, oh, you know what? This job wouldn't even, I mean, this place wouldn't even be what it's like if it wasn't for you. No, most of them are talking about you behind your back, amen. And you're still coming to get that check because you need the money. Bring this out. You bring it. Come on. We keep coming to church because I need a word. We keep coming, amen. Hallelujah, because in this right here, there is an anointing that destroys every yoke and every bond that sets the country free. I didn't come to please you. You didn't come to please me. We come to honor our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and give him glory. Hallelujah. We come for him. Amen. He said, but I'm going to tell you, time's getting rough. He said, this is what's going to happen. They're going to throw you out of church because you don't agree with the woke, the woke crowd. They're going to they're gonna throw you out of church because you're preaching against, amen, all of these 27 genders. No, understand this right here. I'm preaching against ignorance. That's what we're saying. Come on. Understand this right here. I'm going to get in trouble. I cannot stand and talk to stupid, amen, and seem like I'm getting any place. I can't do it. Ignorance won't listen, and, and stupid don't care. Amen? Come on. I'm not wasting my time, amen, talking to somebody that's already made up their mind that they don't know what they are, but they're trying to make sense and trying to, oh no, understand this right here. You're so confused, you don't even know who you are. And then they want to call us haters? Come on, somebody. To me, that's like someone telling you, don't touch that stove, it's hot. Oh, you can't tell me that. I'm saying it's cold. Oh, my God. And then they're going, right. come on. Come on. No wonder America's in the shape it's in. Come on. We got judges right now. Amen. They would not even make a good crosswalk uh, judge. You know, in school, some of you are old enough to know, some of you don't. 
He used to put that little white uh, thing on. And they were standing over there on the crosswalk. And I, these were kids. I had one. He just, just, he just me. I said, I'm going, no, oh, you can't go. Till I say go. So I wait. No cars coming. Oh, you can't go. I'm the boss. I said, wait a minute. There's nothing coming. I, I can go. No, you can't. So I took it off of him, put it on. Now I'm the boss. And I said, let's go. <laughs> now listen. Until the church begins to take that authority away from the world. And get our children back. Until mom and dad stand up and say, listen, you are not, you are not the parent of my child. You are not going to be the one that determines if my little Jamie becomes Jenny. You are not the one that's going to do this right here. This is my child. God gave me these children, and I'm going to raise them up in the way of the Lord. I told my wife, good thing this didn't start to have my children raised. I'd be in jail. I'm just being real. I'd be in jail. I can't deal with stupid. I cannot deal with stupid. And now we're voting them into office. Now we've got them as judges. Now we've got them out here and they're making laws of the land. And the church goes, Silent. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. No, what we need to do is say, wait a minute. How many of you voted for these How idiots? Oh, you call them idiots and stupid? I'm being real nice. Hallelujah. Now watch this right here. Isaiah 59 verse 8. i got to hurry up because y'all are just looking tired. Amen. Let me know that in the early day when they come to church, you might want to just put a little mat down and put the kids down and let them go to sleep because you're going to be there all day. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray it. When they get to singing, they didn't stop singing until 3 o'clock. Come on. Tired? No tired man. You were out in the spirit laying on the floor. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're still doing good here. Amen. Isaiah 59 verse 8. Listen to this right here and see where it puts your mind. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their going. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever, oh, here we go. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. We keep praying, God, we need peace in America. We need safety in America. You know what God said? Learn how to vote. That's what God said. He said, look, it don't matter if they're Democrat or Republican or Independent. Know if they saved or not. No, amen. Come on. Know if they got some common sense. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 4. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. How many have been keeping up with this homeless? San Francisco, Los Angeles. Oh, we'll get over here, you know, to Austin. We'll get over here to Houston. Oh, we'll get over here to Cleveland. Copper's cold. Why do we have homeless? Come on, think about it. Why do we have homeless? I had an individual tell me this right here. I don't like people telling me what to do. I said, you're on the wrong planet. You are on the wrong planet. You tell that red light, it can't tell you to stop, and you run through it. Come on, somebody. Uh-huh. Oh, you can't tell me. I don't like people telling me what to do. Understand this right here. When you're out there homeless, somebody's still telling you what to do. I don't want to have to work. I bet you one thing, you get hungry enough, you'll work. I told my kids, listen, understand this right here. You don't work, you don't eat. That plate's still going to be sitting right there. And when they get real hungry, they say, hey, I, I think I better go mow the yard. And then come on and eat. 
Oh, that's child abuse. Come on. No, it's called raising your child up. Amen. That they'll know that they're going to know how to work. Amen. Hallelujah. I was telling my wife this, and I said, you know, I thank God for my, uh, my foster parents. I thank God that they raised me up and taught me how to work. Because at 15 years old, here I was working on the farm, but then I want some extra money. Now listen to this right here. So I went down there to the railway uh, down there, and they were bringing in boxcars of potatoes. I'm Irish. I was like, hey, this is heaven, ain't it? <laughs> hey. 100-pound sacks of potatoes, 15 years old, loading them into boxcars. Okay. And then Dad said, when you get done, your chores are still going to have to be done. I would go to bed. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be, you know, uh, reading and I got a test coming up or, and I got this coming up. I would just fall. I fell asleep so many times with my head buried in, in my in my homework, just sound asleep. But I learned this right here. Nothing comes free. Amen. Nothing comes free. And so when you look at this right here, it means if you want it, you're going to have to work. And you're going to have to work. And you're going to have to work to be able to do it. America, land of opportunity. I've had people say, oh, you and your wife, you all have it made. Oh, you Let me tell you something. They don't know. When she was working three jobs and I was working three jobs. And there were times, amen, that were... Listen, everybody else is going out and, oh, they're going to the movies or they're going over here, going to do that right there. Guess what? We were still working hard and making sure that everything that we had was paid. And we were making sure that we were setting up a future for retirement. Amen. Why? Because we wanted to be the solution and not the problem. In America, we got too many problems. Because everything is so easy to come by. I gave for the ministry right here, started giving to Israel. You ought to see all the mail I got coming in wanting money. I said, I don't know who these are. I'm blessing Israel. And all of a sudden I got all this coming in and we need money, we need money, we need money. And we need this right here, we need that right there. And I said, okay, that's fine. I threw them in the garbage. Because I know what God called me to do. I'm going to do one thing very well. But understand this right here. If I try to go through all of these right here, I can do a little here, a little there. But it's not going to get done. I want to make sure that what I'm doing lines up with what God told me. Amen. And I'm not going to allow, watch this, I'm not going to allow the enemy to distract me. America. Listen. We got to the place where we don't judge. Judge not lest you be judged. How many ever heard that? Oh, don't you judge me. It's judging salvation. Judging the fruits. How many are fruit inspectors? Amen. I was in line at H-E-B and this individual, I told him, I said, you can go ahead of me. He only had about three things. And all of a sudden he stopped me and he said, wait a minute. He had a pack of strawberries and he looked at me and he said, these are molded. Molded. They're molded. The value That's right. And he says, listen, I'm taking them back and get some more because I am not going to buy something that's already molded. Yeah. I thought about that. I said, you know what? Isn't this something that if you see the works of a believer that are molded, <laughs> wow. you got to get them out. Wow. The works, get them out, get them out. Because if you don't, it'll cause the rest to go bad. So what happened was he goes back, gets another pack. They're molded too. I said, find the manager, find the store manager, let them know, amen, wherever you got this produce right here, wherever it came from, you got some bad stuff. Well, I want to tell you something. You'll never get molded word of God. It'll always be fresh. I don't care how many times you read it. It'll always be fresh. 
And so I'm saying this right here. As we have declared that this year, amen, as we will finish this year coming up, we're going to lift our hands and say, oh God, everything you brought to me, you moved it through me. I'm going to finish this race. I'm coming forth. As Apostle Paul said, amen, I have run my race. I have completed it, amen. Hallelujah. So we have for whosoever will. I want to say this. We are getting ready to reach out to a broken world. The way we do it may seem different. Served over 100 plates out there, a barbecue, free to the community. Free. They were pulling in. Why, why, why are you doing this? Do you know how much barbecue costs? Let me tell you something. It's not so expensive when it comes to gaining friends. And they said, wow, this is something. And then again we did. We did hot dogs. We did uh, hamburgers. And they're coming and going, why are you doing this? We want the community to know that we have a community mindset. We have a community heart. That we want to research or We want to reach out to them. We want to see a difference in Colleen and Copper's Cove and Harker Heights. We want to see a difference. Free. Had someone say, well, can I give you some money? No. Nope. You can't buy the joy that we received that day. The ones that participated, man, there was so much joy out there, and the men and the women out there, and, and laughing, having a good time, sister with the shaved ice, man. I'm going to tell you something. Ooh. There were angels wanting somebody they couldn't have that. Amen? Hallelujah. But everybody had such a great time. You see, 4th of July used to be a time when families came together. I mean, there would be barbecues, there'd be picnics, and they'd all, hey, come on, I'm sorry for the one, you know, I said, they, they were mending bridges, they were rebuilding bridges and everything. It was a time of joy. But now, what happens is, we've lost that. The church, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I said the joy of the Lord is our strength. This Tuesday, this Tuesday, thank God for all that he's brought you through. Yeah. Thank God for the valleys. Yes. Thank God for the mountains. Amen. Thank God for the ones he took out of your life that were detrimental, the negative voices and brought somebody in that is positive and powerful. They're not resisting you, they're assisting you. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Begin to thank God that in all this right here, my statement is, I can still do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you look on TV, you see all these gay pride marches. You see children are being subjected right now to nudity in these marches. I mean, it's, it's perversion at its highest rate. But being promoted by some of the major news networks. Oh, this was so wonderful. It just made me cry. And I'm thinking, my God, have we regressed to that point that little children have to be subjected to naked men riding bicycles? Have we? Have we come to the place that we look out at the White House and we begin to see such celebration of gay pride? A man with his surgery takes his top off yeah. in front of the world to say, see, <laughs> I trans to a woman and I said to myself, not out loud, you idiot, you're still a man. Yeah. Yeah. And you are an embarrassment Check. Check to manhood. Check the but kids are looking at this and saying, well, you know what? what Maybe someday I can be like him. Yeah. Maybe someday, you know, maybe someday I can trans. But I want to say this right here. The church of the living God can never stand up for that, can never agree to that. We have to stand up, make our statement known, and stand on the solid word of God. Amen. And do not apologize for it. That's the only way we're going to get America back. Bow your heads with me now. Hallelujah. Stand with me if you can.
just stand. You're positioning yourself for a move. You cannot move forward when you're seated. But when you stand, you're saying, you know what? I, I can move. I can, I can make this move. God says spiritually right now, you're standing and getting yourself ready for a move. Because God's not through with this year. God's not through with America. And God is saying, it's going to be through some hard times that America will turn back to me. It's going to be through some storms that America's going to turn back to me. Someone said, God, why didn't you stop that tornado? God, why didn't you stop that hurricane? God, why didn't you stop death on that child? Why didn't you do this? And God says, because when I created everything, I gave it a free will. He said, but I was in the midst of that tornado. And I saved lives. I was in the midst of that hurricane. He said, yes. I saved lives. Some of them were saved in death. Some of them were saved in life. But he said, I got the glory. And he said, through all this is happening in America today, lift up your eyes. Lift up your head. For your redemption draws nigh. The doors of heaven are open. Blessings are pouring. He said, look around you. Count the blessings. Name them one by one. Count the blessings and see what God has done this year. As we begin to move forward, God is saying, watch. He said, don't look at the church. Don't look at religion. Don't look. And what leadership is doing, he said, in the White House. He said, but look at what I am doing. For I am getting ready to move, says the Lord. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. Call your children together. Call your grandchildren. Begin to share salvation's message. Begin to share with them that without accepting what Jesus did at Calvary. Without accepting His death, burial, and resurrection, there is no salvation. The world and its deception is taking many to hell. But God is saying that today salvation preached will bring many into the kingdom. Lift your hands and spray. Stand in for your children. Stand in for your grandchildren. Stand in for that co-worker. Stand in for that one that you know is not right with God. Stand in and know that right now as you're praying for them. As you're lifting up a name right here this morning. You're bringing a change to this nation. You're bringing a change to this city. You're bringing a change to the community. Hallelujah. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray salvation. We pray. Hallelujah. Right now. The anointing that destroys every yoke and every bond. That says that's the captive free. We pray right now, Lord God, for that lost daughter. We pray for that lost son. We pray right now that, Lord God, the backsliders are coming home. We pray that right now the sick are being healed. We pray that right now demons are fleeing. We pray right now there's a breakthrough in the heaven. We pray that right now, Lord God, there's going to be a change in government in this nation. We pray that right now your will be done in America as it is in heaven. Give him glory and honor and praise this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I, I want to say this. We have some ice cream and cake back here in the back. In the back. Please, amen. Come on back. We're going to, uh, just to be able to celebrate and congregate together a little bit and everything. And also, we're going to make a determination who dressed the most patriotic, and they're going to get a gift certificate. Yay.